Touchdown. Interception. Field goal. Pick six. These are a few of many key phrases used to describe the pad slamming, helmet ramming game of football. It's one of America's favorite pastimes and is watched by everyone. Well, everyone except for me. I have to embarrassingly admit that I don't enjoy football. It's not that I don't want to enjoy it, I've just never understood the hype like others have. However, recently, I've been having dreams of me on the field, sweaty and ready to take on the other team, and frankly, it's been enlightening. I decided to confront my dream and give this contact sport another chance. I spent the day juking and cutting my way around the field, and my cuts were so clean I caused a few people to lose their socks out there. When I was in the center of the field, I made a vow to myself. I promised that I would immerse myself in the world of football and get to the root of my distaste for the game. Back at home, I hopped on my computer and began doing research on football and how I can get involved. I read about going to games, watching the game at a local bar, and tailgating. I then discovered a video from a channel named Nancy Today titled Nancy Today UGA Tailgate ASMR. The video was captioned, so that's what it's all about. That's all I needed to know to confirm Nancy is a football fanatic, and I decided to give it a watch. This is about tailgating. Now you know what tailgating is, right? Yeah, I know you don't. Here. It has to do with football. Look at this. This is what happens when you tailgate. This is the day before the, the football game. Whatever. But you bring your tent, and you set it up, and of course they're drinking Coke. Nancy was spitting out knowledge, and I was soaking it in like a sponge. She mentioned you set up shop the day before the big game and to make sure you have coke to go around for all the other tailgaters. Nancy continues to explain the odds and ends of tailgating and then proceeds to give us a special treat. She brought along a professional tailgater to give us the full scoop on what tailgating's all about. And tell me about what a tailgate is to you. Oh, oh gosh, you have to get ready the night before. Like, you have to get all your stuff packed and ready. All your gear. Gear. Your gear. This licensed gator kept mentioning her gear. So to get involved in the tailgating community, I came to the conclusion you must be geared out repping your hometown team. And I then you play games and sit and talk and listen to the football games until it's time for your game. A lot of people bring satellite and the flat screens so you can watch other football games while you're waiting for your game and you're eating the food. I felt that this was pivotal information for understanding football. To have as many games on as possible during the tailgating session. The video was coming to a close and Nancy cracked a joke about cars tailgating you while driving. But then she said this. She, she tailgates. <laughs> I felt a sense of jealousy wash over me because I wanted Nancy to point a camera at me and say, he tailgates. I reflected on what she said about showing up to tailgate the day before the big game and noticed my local team had a game that Sunday. I decided to show up to tailgate that coming Saturday. Saturday came and I showed up for the tailgate. Operation Attack the Snacks was officially a go. No one else had arrived yet, but I brushed this off as me being there early. But that's okay, cause more chips to myself, right? I was geared out from head to toe and felt excited to hang out with my fellow game watchers. If everything Nancy said was true, I was going to feel a big sense of camaraderie. Time was passing by quickly and I began to feel a little out of place. People were giving me weird stares as I stood in a vacant parking lot with chips and a football spread, but again, I kept my faith in Nancy and pressed on. Look at this. This is what happens when you tailgate. This is the day before the, the football game. The football game. More and more time passed and I began doubting Nancy. As I stood there eating chips, I couldn't help but feel like the sad clown. Was this all a joke to make me show up at the stadium only to be there alone? As time went on, I became enraged. I sat there with a party pack of Tostitos scoops all to myself, which was a painful reminder of my 16th birthday. Lots of chips and no friends. Feeling hurt, I decided enough was enough. I broke down my supplies and went home. I saw there was an Ohio State game on that night, 
so I made the decision to head to a local sports bar to watch the game. Watching the game at a sports bar was enthralling. It was me and my fellow hometowners cheering on the Buckeyes and it was amazing. I felt highs, lows, and everything in between. However, as the night progressed, one thing stood out clear as day to me. Everyone else was there with their father. Mine hasn't been in the picture in years. I suddenly realized I stuck out like a sore thumb and decided to leave the bar. Back at home, I began reflecting on my new revelation and became really sad. I'm not in a position to contact my dad. He left my mom and I when I was younger, but it explains why I never gave the game of football a chance. I didn't have the childhood experience of throwing football with dad, watching the game with dad, and playing pickup games with dad. I began thinking of ways to bridge this gap, and that's when I dropped in the pocket to launch out my own Hail Mary. In order for me to fully understand football, I needed to experience what I missed in my childhood and have those moments with a father figure. I did what any sane person would do, and I hopped on Craigslist. I made a post hiring an actor to portray a father figure for an hour. I kept it pretty vague, but mentioned we're going to throw some football. I was also sure to use some buzzwords like authentic and real, because I wasn't looking for some run-of-the-mill dad. I was looking for my dad. A few days later, I received an email that would forever change my life. It was a picture along with a phone number from a guy named Daryl. He was interested in being my dad. Daryl and I began texting back and forth immediately. We set up a date and time to meet, and Daryl even mentioned he would do well and obey all instructions. He also said he will do five best impressions. I was over the moon with excitement to finally meet my father. I didn't want to meet my dad for the first time without a gift, so I went to WikiHow and looked up gift ideas for him. I decided on a scrapbook. After a couple of hours, my scrapbook was finally done. I included our text conversation as well as his original email to me with some cool stickers that correlated. On the next page, I depicted us throwing football back and forth. Then, I took a photo similar to the one he sent me showing us his father and son because I've got big shoes to fill. I then did some cutouts of him and I with some really cool stickers, you know, to make the page pop. Finally, I put the adventure continues with some blank pages after to show we have a lot of growing to do. I was officially ready to meet Dad. Daryl, or should I say Dad, showed up and we instantly connected. For the first time, I knew what it felt like to have a father figure stand by me. He even showed me how to throw a football. A little turn on it. Turn yeah, on but you you keeping your throw straight, but you just pin a little curb on it, just a little turn. See, like that, like how I threw it, instead of regular throwing it, I made it, you know, so you spent. Put, you put your hands in the laces? Or? Yeah. So you, you hold it like that? Yeah, and then when you let off the ball, you're just going to, like, just, it? yeah, it's a little spam, like, yeah. That's how you do it? Mm-hmm. After mastering the spiral, we decided to do some close snaps for a quick father and son bonding session. I was snapping loads into dad's hands, and he was firing them right back into mine. Great cut. Thanks, dad. Ready, set, cut. Oh! oh. <laughs> that, Go to me! That one went into orbit, man. Sorry about that. Yeah. Sorry about that, dad. Ready, set, cut. Let's short, son. Oh. Oh. After getting some good practice in, I had two of my sound guys step in for a quick game of 2v2 against Dad and I. We told them it was going to be a relaxed game, but what they didn't know is that we were there to slap some ass. Ready, set, hut. Good catch, son. <laughs> Woo, way to go. Good throw, Dad. Good play. All right, so I'm gonna hit another button up, then I'm gonna dash, and then hit me on that. Ready, set, hut! Go! Oh. Oh, come on, son! Dang! Come on, buddy! I'm gonna hit a slant route, and hit me on that. 
Right, set, hut. Oh, oh good catch. Yeah. Great catch. That's my dad right there. All right, I'm just going to go up and then just complete sideways rather than slanting it this time. Okay. Ready, set, hut. Let it go, boy. Great catch, son. Good throw, Dad. After spanking these little boys raw, they started saying that it was unfair because my wide receiving skills were comparable to Larry Fitzgerald. So they asked me to step in the pocket. I hit you on that. Set, hey. Oh, woo. Good catch, Dad. <laughs> they quickly realized they underestimated Dad because he's got quicker feet than Kevin Bacon and Footloose. Like my hat just did. Go up, cut out. And dart it? Yeah. Ready, set, hike! Oh! One hand! That's my dad right there. That's a one hand! That's my dad right there. It's all or nothing here. I want you to go deep. Okay, Hail Mary. You're gonna Hail Mary it. All right. All right I got faith in you, Dad. All right. Ready, set, hike. It's coming. Oh! <laughs> we wanted to keep going, but my sound guys needed to stop because they were chafing so bad from that ass smacking. So we decided to call it quits and dad and I started throwing the pig skin back and forth. So what are, what are your plans tonight, dad? Oh, uh, little football games all day. Yeah? The rest of the college. Gonna watch some big games? Yeah. The big leaguers? I was making small talk with dad, but on the inside, I was riddled with nerves. I wanted to ask him a very important question, but kept beating around the bush. Catch. Uh. All right. Finally, I built the courage to drop the question. Why, why'd you leave mom and I? Oh, son. Things came about with my work and, you know, it was either make more money or, you know, I couldn't right be able to raise you guys properly. So, so I had to take what was offered to me on the table. That was to leave you guys with mom and me go make more money. Well, you never came back. Yes, yeah, son, but you know, things got just accordingly behind and you know, I couldn't keep up with, you know, different job to jobs. And yeah, I just never, you know, really got down bad, start fooling with drugs a little bit, clean myself up in rehab and I'm just trying to make things better now, so. Well, I, I appreciate it, Dad. It's, I'm sorry. It's sad. I'm just. I'm good. I'm glad to have you back. You know. Oh, no problem, son. That's what I did it for. That's why I'm five years clean now, trying to do better and you know come back into you guys' lives. Well, just don't don't leave us again like that, because that's. You know, you said you left for work, and. We never saw any of the money and we never had you around. Yeah, son, but you know, like I told you again, I had different drug problems, different job yeah. to job. Hey, I even got homeless out of town a couple of times. I'll tell you what, the touchdown for me today is having you back in front of me, Dad, so. Dad and I finally mended our relationship and during this moment, it felt like the world stopped turning. Everything stood silent and as if I were Jimmy Neutron, a brain blast flooded over me, and football suddenly made complete sense. Bring it in, Dad. Great. All right, Dad, I just, I made this for you. Presenting Dad his gift was very nerve wracking, but it paid off because he loved it so much, and our relationship grew immensely. Check it out. Oh, okay. Great. Oh, it's awesome, son. 
That one's my favorite. Oh, that's alpha. And then it says the adventure continues because we we still have a lot of growing and stuff to do together, so. Spending the day with Daryl, I realized football isn't about the game. It isn't about the atmosphere. Hell, it's not even about the beer. It's about spending time with loved ones, with every hike, every snap, every touchdown. After the day was coming to an end, I realized Daryl isn't just some guy from Craigslist. He's my dad, and to me, that's the ultimate touchdown. I love you, Dad. Love you too, son. Hey, you did awesome work today, son. Thanks, Dad. Nice work, man.